The incredible video to your left is the result of a famous study from 2007 where an MRI scan was done every two weeks on a 38-year-old man with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. And you can see all of the new lesions coming and going and shrinking down. And believe it or not, this man had absolutely no new symptoms and was completely stable for the entire year of the study. So he had an MRI scan every two weeks and you can see all those new lesions in different areas of the brain and believe it or not, he felt completely fine. And it kind of shows the duality of multiple sclerosis. And you may ask, how could he be stable with all that inflammation in the brain? Well, there are multiple reasons for this. One is that there's a variation in the destructivity of the lesions, how much actual tissue injury there is, and also some areas of the brain are not as critical as others. For instance, if you have a highly destructive lesion in the left posterior limb of the internal capsule, you're likely to have a lot of weakness on the right side of the body. But some areas of the brain are simply not as important, or at least not as noticeable clinically. For instance, if you have lesions in the corpus callosum, that's associated with multitasking difficulty. If you have lesions in the frontal lobe, that may be associated with subtle mood or personality changes, or relatively subtle cognitive changes that you may or may may not notice. And even if you do notice them, you may not know for sure that they're related to multiple sclerosis. They may be related to fatigue or poor diet or sleep deprivation or your screaming children or stress at work or a myriad of other factors. It's really, really difficult to say for sure. And it's difficult to say that a change in these symptoms is related to a change in the underlying pathology of multiple sclerosis. Also, there's a tremendous amount of variation in how destructive an individual lesion it is. Believe it or not, even a lesion in a critical area of the brain, like a motor or speech area, does not necessarily cause obvious symptoms every time. And that's because the destruction in multiple sclerosis may be very incomplete. Unlike a stroke where the area that's affected is infarcted, in multiple sclerosis you can sometimes have demyelination, loss of myelin, with relative sparing of the underlying nerve fibers or active axons. So sometimes it's difficult to say when you look at a lesion, is that area of the brain functioning or is it not? And also the destruction and injury may be very incomplete even in a critical area. If you have a decrease in strength of your left arm by 10%, are you actually going to notice that if you're not a professional mechanic or professional arm wrestler, for instance? So in a way, the, this video is very reassuring because it shows you how resilient people are with multiple sclerosis. You can see this dive bomber effect of lesions on the brain, yet he's completely fine doing well, living a happy life. Now he was 38 years old at the time of the study in 2007. Now it's 2010, excuse me, 2020. So perhaps he's around 51. And for all I know, he's still a CEO, marathon runner, perfectly happy doing well in life. Or maybe he's had a lot of problems since that time. Unfortunately, I don't have a follow up. But it may be reassuring, and indeed, clinically, we have seen people who have had very severe disability, people who have been in a wheelchair or had severe vision loss five times and come back every time, and yet others are not so lucky. However, at the same time, this is very frightening because it teaches us that the outward appearance of someone with multiple sclerosis, even if they look good, even if they feel good subjectively, may not actually be good. And there's a lot of evidence that lesions aren't so harmless, even if they cause no symptoms. For instance, it's well known that lesions directly predict the risk of a relapse. Even though new lesions on MRI are much more common than relapses, sometimes 10 times more common than clinical relapses in some studies, there's definitely an association between new lesions and future risk of relapses. And also, even if they don't cause symptoms at the time, there's this thought that they may cause problems later on. For instance, in one of the early beta interferon studies, it was found that if you had new gadolinium enhancing lesions while taking the treatment, you were much more likely to become disabled many, many years later. So there's this, this idea that the lesions may cause some amount of injury now to the nervous system, but you're young and resilient and you can sort of withstand it and continue to function, but later they may be a decompensation. And there are multiple pathological reasons for this. One may be this sort of low level of inflammation within the lesions that Professor Gavin Giovannoni and others call smoldering multiple sclerosis. 
on pathological studies and certain advanced imaging studies, we see evidence of microglia, white blood cells within the central nervous system that are causing multiple sclerosis. And they may not cause new super hot lesions associated with flares, but they may cause a little bit of inflammation and destruction within existing lesions. And those lesions may or may not slowly expand on MRI. Even if the lesion looks stable, that doesn't mean there's not activity within the lesion. Also, there's this idea that earlier injury to the nervous system may cause problems later on. That you may have this injury to your nervous system that you can compensate for when you're young, but as you get older, there may be problems within the neurons themselves. Energy failure, mitochondrial failure, that may cause a sort of decompensation from earlier injury. And so that's sort of the fear of these new lesions. And so I just think it's incredible how this MRI teaches us two things simultaneously Simultaneously, the duality of the resilience of humans, yet also our fragility in the face of injury. So I'd love you to share your own experiences. Have you experienced new lesions on MRI with no new symptoms or no new symptoms despite, excuse me, new symptoms despite no new MRI lesions? And what do you think about this study? Is it frightening or is it reassuring? And do you have other requests for videos? Please post in the comments below.